Thank you. When he started telling me about that, the introvert in me, he talked about pulling a wig out. The introvert in me said, whoa. <laughs> but I also felt like there was a compelling message that needed to be shared. Thank you, Brother Dale. He said something a minute ago that is very, very practicable. It's a lot easier for somebody when you know the Lord is dealing with them. We tend to ask them, would you like to go pray? Or maybe we want to tell them you need to go pray. God knows you need to go pray. But how about if you'd like to go pray, I'll go with you. That's, that's, a, that's a beautiful statement right there. That's a beautiful statement. I want to change gears, but stay inside the same transmission, if you will, and uh, talk about gratitude. Because if you've got a story like Brother Dale's, Every day that you continue to live for God is an expression of your gratitude. And your story don't have to be like his. It could be like mine, raised in a, in a Pentecostal church by a pastor dad and, and one of the most faithful women you'd ever meet, my mom. Um, but all their faithfulness couldn't keep me saved. And... Uh, I didn't live for God at all as a, as a teenager in, in high school. Uh, but mercy, mercy looked past my own ingratitude. Um, we know that God is motivated by love for his people. Everybody knows that, right? You know, let me start here. Don't you like it when people say thank you? Does it grate against your nerves when people don't? When thank you is very much in order and everybody in the room knows that thank you is very much in order and it doesn't come. Or it's not shown. Um... This is a pet peeve of mine. Ingratitude mm, just cooks my gizzard. Um, the old saying, God is love. We, we, we know that God is motivated by his, his love for his people, right? Um, John chapter 3, God so loved the world that he, he literally came and, and died in the flesh. The cross is surely the ultimate symbol of God's love toward mankind. Uh, Jesus' words from John 15, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down his, one's life for his friends. Jesus was about to do that. He was, he's literally telling his future. And he's telling them, I'm going to show you the ultimate expression of, of my love. And, and no doubt that everything that God has done for his people, us, has been motivated by his love for us. The blessings of the Lord are a product of his love for us. Um, he loves people. We, we know that. So uh, no doubt on the day that Luke recorded in the 17th chapter of his gospel, he was describing what surely he thought was the love of God for mankind on display. Luke 17 and 11 begins like this. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then he entered into a certain village. There met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. The only reason Luke wrote that was to make sure that everybody knew that they were obeying the law. 
And they lifted up their voices. They didn't have any choice. They're a long ways away. They had to shout, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. That's a great big wow. What, what, what an experience. I don't know who the big mouth was that, that first hollered at Jesus from across the way, have mercy on us, but the other nine should have been showing some serious gratitude to the big mouth. Gratitude. Thanks, buddy. Your big mouth has gotten on my nerves for years, but I'm sure thankful for it today. See, I mean, you may have to be creative, but anybody can show some gratitude. And as they went, they were, they were cleansed. Don't you know that there was some serious celebrating on their way to find that priest? The priest, seeing ten men coming at him as fast as they could get, the closer they got, it was becoming more apparent that, that that one's missing an ear and that one half his nose is gone. These are lepers. Hold on, boys. No, we're cleansed. We're cleansed. We're cleansed. We're, we're just coming to show you. But these guys were going to get to go home for the first time in years. These guys were going to get to join society for the first time in years. When the Bible says that they were cleansed, it doesn't mean that they took a bath. He healed them from a disease that killed 100% of those who contracted it. So yeah, some pretty serious celebrating going on. You would, you would think that some pretty amazing thankfulness on their part. If you look in the Nave's topical Bible for an entry on gratitude, it will direct you to a different word that Orville Nave deemed its equal. The word is thankful. Thankful, this compound word that draws a picture of a person who is full of thanks. Full of thanks. Can't say thank you enough. We just came through Thanksgiving, and I see that everyone made it, and your clothes are, well, maybe your belt's a little looser. <laughs> I have a feeling that lots of people were pretty full on Thanksgiving, hopefully as full of thanks as they were of turkey and cranberry. Gratitude is typically defined as condition of being thankful it comes from this a, a, a Latin word gratis which shockingly enough means thankful um, thankful is, is the recognition that there is blessing in my life that came from an external source I'm blessed because somebody blessed me. I didn't bless myself. I don't see too many people saying, well, I thank me. There's some folks who are so self-centered, so self you could imagine them having that conversation. But Gratitude is expressed always towards someone else. Because somebody else blessed you, someone else helped you, someone else was kind to you, someone else gave you something that, that you needed. It's, a, it's an external blessing. And so whenever you express gratitude, it's always that you are thanking someone else. And you know, gratitude is healthy. Some of y'all figured this out. thought I was going to share some revelation. From the website of the American Heart Association, gratitude is more than a buzzword. It's a habit and practice. 
Clinical trials indicate that the practice of gratitude can have dramatic and lasting effects in a person's life. It can lower blood pressure and improve immune function. Grateful people engage in more exercise, hmm. have better dietary behaviors, hmm. are, more, are less likely to abuse alcohol, and have higher rates of medication adherence or the medicine works better. Isn't that amazing? You can have such a stinky negative attitude that pills won't even help. <laughs> if you consider the demeanor of ungrateful people, just think about that for a minute. That will turn your smile into a frown. Because ungrateful people, man, they're, they're just not fun to be around. What are some of the behaviors you expect from ungrateful people? Grumpy, rude, self-centered, self-absorbed, difficult, negative. Man, somebody they won't... They, won't say thank you. Um, it, it just drives me bananas. Um, someone who takes the blessings in their lives for granted. Someone who abuses the kindness of others. And then there are some that just can't seem to recognize the fact that I am really blessed. And most of it came from someone else. Someone blessed me. Someone helped me. And, and because they can't see the fact that, that uh, others have been kind to them, they, they are quite incapable of being grateful. Can I tell you one of the hallmarks of ingratitude? Selfishness. Can I tell you one of the hallmarks of selfishness and self-centeredness? Hurt. Damage in, in someone's lives tends to turn them inside. And they can't see anything else but the negativity. And it's true, ungrateful people are not fun to be around. Typically, they just can't see all the blessings they have because all they can see is the negativity and all they can see are the things that they don't have. Dennis Prager says in his book, Happiness is a Serious Problem. One cannot be a good person without gratitude. And one cannot be a happy person without gratitude. So I'm going to tell you, if you can't say thankful or if you can't say thank you, enjoy your miserableness. Really. Even if you are more interested in being happy than in being good, you will still have to cultivate the most important ingredient to both qualities uh, by becoming more grateful in order to be happy. You will become a better person because gratitude will make you better. How about that? fact is the concept of gratitude is very biblical and how about that something the Bible teaches us should be a part of our lives will make us happier and healthier isn't that shocking Paul said to the Thessalonian church and everything give thanks but he didn't stop there that's good advice and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. It's the will of God for you to be thankful, for you to show gratitude. That's God's will for you. If you're ever wondering, what is God's will for me? Go find somebody and say thank you, and you have fulfilled God's will for you, at least partially. It's God's will for you to be thankful. David 35th Psalm said, I will give you thanks in the great assembly. I'll do it out in front of everybody. 
I will praise you among many people. And isn't it interesting that David associates praise and worship with thanks and gratitude. Gratitude will make you worship. It'll, it'll, it'll cause you to worship the Lord. The famous 136th Psalm, noted for recounting Israel's history through the filter of God's mercy, opens like this, Psalm 136. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, give thanks, be, be grateful, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods. For his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of Lords, for his mercy endures forever. And then for, for verse after verse after verse after verse following that, uh, you read Israel's history with the statement, for his mercy endures forever after every season. I am, I'm grateful for mercy, Lord, let me tell you. But while there's no doubt... that being grateful is healthy and it's a much more becoming demeanor for a person. It appears that gratitude is really important to God. God instituted offerings of thanksgiving in Leviticus and Deuteronomy for his people. When you bring your your offering of thanks he says Jesus parable in Matthew 18 about the unmerciful servant who's forgiven much could have been thrown in prison for the rest of his life to, to pay the debt not sure how that they were going to pay the debt when they were stuck in prison but that was the system he gets great forgiveness, goes and finds somebody that, somebody that owes him a Snickers candy bar and, and, and goes ballistic and throws him in, in jail over the candy bar. And then the guy he owed a whole lot to caught up with him. And Jesus tells us a story about how gratitude is important to God. And I didn't read to you the entire account from Luke's gospel a few moments ago. There's most definitely another chapter to that story of the ten lepers. So I want to I pick up at verse 15 of Luke 17. Luke records in one of them, when he saw that he was healed. Remember, Luke said, as they went to find the priest, they were healed on the way. I don't know how far he got. I don't know how close he was to the priest by the time he realized the leprosy is gone. But whatever the distance was, it didn't matter to him. He went running back to Jesus returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet giving him thanks and he was a Samaritan so Jesus answered and said were there not ten cleansed where are the other give you my version of that. Why did only one of you guys come back to say thanks? I realize you've got a whole life ahead of you now and you're going to get to go home to your wife and you're going to get to see your kids and you get to, I, I realize. But you couldn't be, come back and say thanks? You couldn't come back and, and show a little gratitude? And the only one that did is, 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 is the guy that, well, he probably ain't going back to this town. Because they were in Jerusalem. And Samaritans weren't welcome in Jerusalem. 
I don't know how this fellow wound up in Jerusalem, but he's a long ways from home. He is not with his crowd. And yet he's the one that comes back. The one that was a complete outcast. He comes back and says thanks. I wonder, just could it just be that because he was so bottom of the barrel that it just helped him realize how good God had been to him right then. I don't want, I don't want God to have to put me so low because that's what it takes for me to finally realize holy cow God's been good to me I don't want to I don't want to live in such negativity that it finally takes something crazy to happen for me to shake myself out of it for a moment and realize I'm still blessed Were there not any found to return to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you, King James says, whole. Now here's where you begin to see God's affinity for gratitude in his people. When this guy came back, showed thankfulness he showed gratitude Jesus showed extravagance in his reward to him and at the same time there are nine lepers who were a thank you away from a whole nose One thank you away from ears that looked normal. One thank you away from a, a not a healing, but a restoration. One thank you away. This man is made whole. It means he was restored. Physically, he was restored. Compassion. Multiple times Jesus said he was moved by compassion. Motivated by the sorrowful circumstances of those that he looked on. Compassion brought healing to those ten lepers. Uh, compassion motivated by a love that brought him in the first place. It was love that brought Jesus uh, among men. It was love uh, that looked out with compassion and it was love that fed uh, uh, 5,000 families and 4,000 families. It was love that, that healed those lepers that day. And his compassion, it brought healing and it brought deliverance. And certainly that is something to celebrate. No doubt. But gratitude brought restoration. I said it as I began. We demonstrate our gratitude for the blood every day of our lives. We illustrate our gratitude for God's mercy that, that rescued us, for God's uh, love uh, that has blessed us. We illustrate that, that, that gratitude every day by continuing to live for Him. Uh, and you got to understand this. Uh, every day is a great big thank you when I'm living for God. 
when I'm walking with him, when I'm doing my best to be faithful to him. Every day is, is my lived out gratitude, my, my thank yous to him. And I, I, I see an awful lot of people, though, who just don't seem to get all that I know God has for them. But at the same time, I see so many people whose lives don't say thank you for mercy very well. I can live for God on Sunday. Thursday, I'm not doing very good. My thank yous have become really quiet. My thank yous are not visible. They're not illustrated anymore. But restoration came with gratitude. Can I tell you tonight that there are things that God really does want to give you, to bless you with, that, that there are things that God really does want to restore back into your life, but the gratitude is not there, and God is motivated by that gratitude. If not, this man that came back wouldn't have gotten the restoration that he did, but God is impressed with gratitude. His love is eternal. It's going to be. He's not going to diminish his love for humanity uh, but there was one that came back uh, who said thank you uh, and he left that circumstance with a whole lot more than everybody else uh, and I just wonder uh, if the other nine uh, four or five years down the road weren't looking back saying man uh, if we had just gone back uh, and said Lord we thank you uh, my wife wouldn't look at me funny uh, kids wouldn't run from me when I walked down the street uh, but wait I've been healed uh, I've been healed uh, yes you have uh, but that one was restored. Gratitude motivates God to restore things into our lives that have been lost. Mm. The contrast is striking. Compassion, God's emotion towards us brought healing. That's God's emotion. Our emotion is gratitude. Man's response to that healing and the gratitude brought something that was way better than healing. It brought a restoration in this man. And his gratitude completely changed his life. And I know, I know, it, it's, it's, we should mention these, these 10 guys had already had a life-changing experience just because he had healed them. He had literally saved their lives. But when he restored this one, here's the power of restoration. It changed how he was going to be perceived by everyone who encountered him. I'm telling you, gratitude will change how people perceive you because your gratitude is going to be, bring restoration of things in your life that can, cannot come in any other fashion. And, and his gratitude changed him so dramatically that others were going to look at him in the future. And for the other nine, kids would run and moms would grab their children and, and pull them away from those other nine guys. But this old boy went back to Samaria and nobody ever knew he had been sick. Wouldn't it be amazing if the church was full of people that no one would ever know that I was a drug addict. No one would ever know how full of sin I was. No one would ever know what a scallywag I was. And it happens with gratitude. And the ultimate expression of your gratitude is to live for God every day. Stand tonight. Why don't you lift up your hands and just thank the Lord for his blessing. Ha, 
God, I just want you to know I'm thankful. Mm. It's all right. We got a minute. We can we can keep saying, I, "Lord, I thank you." Hallelujah. Every now and again. The Lord gives me something that will change your life. And if you will let your life say thank you to the Lord, it will change your life forever. It will restore what you don't believe can be restored. And sometimes you have to be grateful in faith. But your gratitude will bring a restoration. So be thankful. God loves it when you show gratitude. Gratitude will change your life. And to the one struggling in this fashion... You have so much to live for yet. If you could just see it. You are so very blessed. If you can just see it. But sometimes you just have to intentionally take your eyes off the negative and focus on the positive so that you can become grateful. You have to choose what you look at. But your gratitude, it'll bring you blessings that you didn't realize you could ever have. Your gratitude your gratitude will rescue, rescue you. Your gratitude will activate things from God. Your gratitude. Jesus, I just want you to know I'm thankful. And God, I'm going to get out of the bed this morning and my life is going to say, Because your life shouts way louder than your mouth ever will. So God, my life is going to shout to you today, I am grateful. It'll, it'll change your life. It'll change your life. One more time, would you just thank the Lord with me? Lord, we love you and we're thankful. So thankful for your blessings. So thankful for your love and your mercy. Thankful, thankful. I'm thankful, Lord, that I want my life, I really want my life to shout it. Just as David was willing to shout it among uh, the multitudes, God, let my life proclaim, I am so thankful for your mercy. Amen. Amen. God bless you tonight. Thank you for being at Challenge and Change. Thank you, Brother Dale, for sharing your story with us. It's beautiful.